Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 is your home for high school baseball and softball. The pitch from four, lined in the left field. That's down for a base hit. French is rounding third, and the Eagles walk it off and win the Region 2 Section 1 Championship over Musselman on the Lane to Water walk-off single. Join us all season long for coverage of every EPAC team right here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. I'm right here. How do you think it sounded to me? I'm between you two. <laughs> it is time to meet our candidates for the Jefferson County Commission Middleweight District, Michael Mood and uh, Matt McKinney. Jokingly, in between uh, segments here, I was letting them know I felt like I kind of know them. I see their signs every day when I go down the uh, to the traffic light to, to make my left on 340 there. Uh, gentlemen, you'll get uh, two minutes for an opening statement, and then two minutes closing time. We'll rotate the order for opening and closing statements. In the meantime, uh, when you get a question from our panelists, you'll get about two minutes to answer it if you need that much. If you feel like you need more, uh, just ask us for a little bit more time, and if we have the time to provide it, we'll try our best. If your name is invoked by the other during a comment, you have the right for a direct response. Just uh, wait till that person is done. Let us put a uh, hand up, let us know, we'll call, and you can uh, then uh, answer the direct response uh, that way. And let's begin now with uh, Michael Mood for uh, the opening statement. Thank you for being here, Michael. Good morning. Thank you for having us. My name is Mike Mood. My wife and I moved to Jefferson County in 1995 to raise our family. Uh, I came here growing up as my grandparents and father lived here and decided this is a place that we wanted to raise our family. It is a beautiful county. Uh, it gave us the ability for my wife to stay at home and raise our children. Uh, we had had one boy at the time. We began fostering. We fostered a total of 17 children. Um, three of which we ultimately adopted. As I worked down the road, I found it much harder to be able to spend the time with my family as well as the community events that I was participating in and still commuting uh, two to three hours a day each way. Um, so I began working closer to home, ultimately opening a business here in Jefferson County. Um, in 2015, we also bought out a second business that was failing in Jefferson County and very quickly turned it around um, I'm very fiscally conservative. Um, I work with budgets every day, uh, operating two businesses. Uh, we've got great management that helps us do that. We know how to hire decent people, put decent people in the right places to get the jobs done. Um, and that's one of the problems here in Jefferson County, though, is we don't have good jobs here in the county for people to work here. Many of the people that are coming here are coming here for cheap housing as compared to the D.C. metro area. So they're happy to commute because they're getting houses for hundreds of thousands or less, but they don't have the ability to be able to spend the time with their families, be able to do things like coach Little League Baseball, be involved in the volunteer fire companies, their churches, their county government. All of that is just something they don't have the abilities to do. Um, I want to promote policies that would encourage business growth in appropriately zoned areas in Jefferson County to give people the opportunities to help stay home and work in this county and in doing that that helps build a tax base in building that commercial tax base that helps provide the tax revenue that the residential side of growth is greatly taking away from in our county and as we see the residential growth that's a huge load on our county services um, and in doing that uh, it, it makes it very hard to provide good public safety like fire police and ems and that's the directions that i want to work Matt McKinney. Thank you for the invitation. My name is Matt McKinney. Born and raised in Jefferson County. I was born at Jefferson Memorial Hospital in 1986. I'm proudly raising my family in Jefferson County as well. I'm a husband, a dad. I operate local family businesses, and I'm working for the future of Jefferson County. I'm here to work for you, and I appreciate your support. Please vote for me on May 14th. Thank you, Matt. First question. Okay, so gentlemen, I spend a lot of time at county commission meetings, and I've seen both of you attending uh, meetings of late. So, I'd like to hear from you, what is, how would you describe the role of county commissioner? I guess we'll start with Mr. Mood, since he's uh, on my left. Um, the role of county commissioner is to basically operate the county. They're to be able to provide the budgets to the different departments that they need to successfully operate. Um, they should be uh, putting ordinances in that promote business growth, 
that help build a uh, tax base in this county. Matt? The county commission is an executive function of government. Um, essentially, as uh, Mike just mentioned, you know, we oversee the budgets, we oversee the county departments, and keep the day-to-day -day business going on behalf of county residents. Follow up. So, quick follow up. But so that's what the commission does. But you, as a commissioner, how do you see your role? Because you know we've had a lot of conversations. It's not just sitting in the seat every every two weeks. There's other things that county commissioners do outside of the, that meeting room. So we'll, we'll take it. Back. Uh, yes, sir. As a county commissioner, one, you need to be involved with the county. You have to know what's going on. It's not something that you just show up to a meeting every month. Um, you have to be able to identify what the issues are and be proactive in figuring out what some solutions to those may be. Um, in this particular case, uh, as a commissioner, I mean, you just need to stay on top of things. You need to speak with your constituents. And like I said, I mean, you just need to have, you need to have the capacity to look forward as to how your decisions today are going to affect the county a generation from now. Thank you, Matt. I agree. So the county commissioners all get put on uh, different boards at the county as liaisons. They're going to go out and help these different boards operate. They need to go out in the community and not only speak to the citizens, but more important, they need to listen to the citizens and hear the direction the citizens want to see this county go so that they can use that information to try to bring that back to the commission and direct this county in the direction the citizens as a whole want to see this county grow. John Gilstrap. <clears throat> so along those lines, uh, the, the board is a visionary board. It, the, the decisions you all make affect what the, how the county is going to grow and what it's going to look like generations from now. So right now, we're to, it, one of the, the hot button issues that the board has faced, certainly over the last couple of years, deals with the, the development of tracts of land. So moving forward, it, over time, as generational farmland is sold off uh, to, to new buyers, what's your vision of what is, what's of that future development? Obviously, solar has, has been an option. Residential development is an option. Industrial is an option. There's all kinds of different options. So w how do you see that developing? And, well, whose turn is it? Let's go with Matt McKinney first. Matt McKinney. One of the, one of the biggest things that we must consider right now is that um, we do, our county does have a comprehensive plan. Um, our comprehensive plan is updated every 10 years, and, in fact, it will be uh, updated again by 2025. Uh, that is a that is a a roadmap toward what future growth is going to look like. The important thing for us, you know, especially for the last segment, referring to services and things like that, we must increase our tax base. Um, and in order to increase our tax base, we can't continue just to build residential homes that draw on our tax base. Um, we do have to have commerce in here in order to be able to pay for the things that we need. Um, as I heard impact fees discussed, you know, impact should pay for the impact of growth. However, tax base is how you're going to be able to pay for your expanded services. If you have, if you have homes being built that pay $2,000 a year in property taxes, but they have two students taking $13,000 each into the school system, you're, you're not generating revenue there. You're, you're costing money. Um, I am, I am excited, you know, I'm happy to see that there has been so much interest in Jefferson County, uh, but we need, we need to capitalize, one, on our, our tourism industry and business industry in general. As I've gone down this road, I've listened to a lot of different people and learned a lot of different things about the change of land in the county. Um, one of the big things I listened to was farmers talk about how uh, they have taught their kids to do something other than farming because the farming just is not as profitable as what it used to be. Um, and unfortunately, in turn, now they're heading towards retirement and they really don't have the funds to retire on. So they're looking at things like selling tracts of land off or housing, um, so selling or leasing land off towards these solar compounds. Um, while I 100% understand that and uh, respect their property rights on that, what they're doing is they're doing that, doing it rather far away from their house, close to other people's houses, 
is they're killing the value of others' homes and other parts of the county as they're doing that. So we've got to find some sort of a balance on that. I would like to see us restrict solar compounds. I would like to see them not here. But is that reality? Probably not. But the reality of that is we can pass ordinances on that. If we cannot ban them, we can increase their buffers around them to where they're going to have 500 or 1,000 feet off a property line with a barrier around them prior to their installation so that we're not adversely affecting people's property rights. But as we're looking at all this growth here, this growth is going to help build a tax base. One of the things I've been looking at is uh, vineyards. Some of the vineyards are wanting to come here, but they're being outpriced by the solar compounds and the developers. If we can attract vineyards into Jefferson County, work with our state legislature to help as well and change some, some laws there, we can imp improve the agritourism industry and keep a lot of these people that are leaving Jefferson County and going all over Loudoun County spending and creating tax dollars for them, keep them here in Jefferson County to help build that tax base here and attract people here instead. Steve? Okay. So um, I'll follow up with the um, question we asked at the, uh, the prior uh, uh, candidates, EMS, ambulance services. Um, again, you know, County Commission's been struggling with the, for the last couple of years, um, brought it inside the, the County Commission. Now it's uh, it's fully funded by the County Commission uh, in, in their budget. Uh, Captain Sign, the director of the EMS, uh, responding to concerns from commissioners and citizens that we need more ambulances where we have certain areas of the county that are underserved, proposed three new stations at, and the operate, annual operating cost of that would be about half a million dollars each. So. Are you in favor of expanding the ambulance service? And then if so, how would we fund that in the county budget? Um, so that's kind of one of my favorite places. I've been involved in public safety since about 1989 when I started in the volunteer fire service in Prince George's County, Maryland. Followed up uh, as a police officer in Washington, D.C. for about seven years. Uh, when I came out to Jefferson County, um, I was recruited to join Blue Ridge Mountain Volunteer Fire Company, where I served while I lived on the mountain and worked my way up to uh, the office of captain while I was there. When I moved to Middleway, I looked at that and said, wow, we are way out here and there is a huge lack in public safety out here. Um, I was one of the founding members of Middleway Volunteer Fire Company. Um, I was also one of the ones who really geared up starting ambulance service in Middleway. Um, I was on the ESA board as we talked about uh, the ambulance fee in the beginning stages of that. Um, so I'm very well versed in that. The county did, I think, make the right decision. I was not happy with it in the beginning. Um, but the volunteer fire service on the EMS side was failing. Um, so I think they did do the right thing. I think they just did it too fast. The volunteer fire service was trying to make a slower approach at it that would not have reduced response times to people in the further areas like Middleway and on the mountain. Um, they're very quickly seeing that since they've taken it over, it's almost cost them double now to operate than what it used to cost them. Uh, and they don't know where that money's going to come from. Uh, the ambulance fee is about a quarter of what we had originally proposed it to be. Um, and it's well under what it is in other counties. Um, so we have to build a tax base here. We need to make this a business friendly place to grow so that we can build that business tax base without giving them massive tax breaks, because that's where that money is going to come from to help promote uh, proper fire, police, and EMS in this county. Matt? I'm all for expanding services, but the fact is, is we have to be able to pay for it. You know, the, the tax base question is what comes first. Um, our areas are being served, you know, and, and kudos to Director Sign because he is working hard there. Um, I think as far as this, in particular, the mountain, a third of our population works there or lives up there. Um, but to be honest with you, I think there should be some kind of trauma facility actually on the mountain. However, that's not an obtainable thing without, without having the revenue to pay for it. Um, so that's where our focus needs to be. Follow up? So, quick follow up then. So, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Mood mentioned the, uh, the, the fire fee. Um, would you support raising the ambulance fee? The ambulance fee. Would you support raising the ambulance fee to a level comparable, say, with Berkeley County, 
to help fund some of this uh, expansion. And about 45 seconds for each answer. Uh, with inflation the way that it is now, I, I, I tend not to support any tax increases. We just we need to manage our money better. Michael? Well, I agree with need to manage our money better. We need to find other areas first if there is the ability to get that money. They've not found it. Um, we had initially talked about a $120 ambulance fee about nine years ago, and the commission just plummeted those numbers down. And with that plummet came a plummet in service. Um, so unfortunately, why I'm not a fan of it, the reality is if we're going to keep building here and keep bringing people here, we can either protect them properly or not. So if we had to and don't have the money elsewhere, yes, I would support that. Gentlemen, due to time constraints, I'm going to move to closing statements now. And we have enough time that you can take two full minutes uh, as you move along through it. And Matt McKinney, we'll begin with you first. Okay. Thank you guys for, for having us here. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Hornby, for putting on this event. Um, I'm Matt McKinney, born and raised in Jefferson County, raising my family in Jefferson County. I'm a husband. I'm a dad. I operate family businesses in Jefferson County. Uh, Jefferson County is my home. I think that our best days are ahead of us, and we just need to uh, we need to work to the future. I'm ready to work for you, and I do ask for your support on May 14th. Thank you. I'm surprised you didn't ask for snow once in a while, too, Matt. I'm good on snow. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Mood. Um, again, like I said, my name is Michael Mood. I, I am running for the Middleway District uh, Jefferson County Commission seat, and my visions are building a tax base here by making this a business-friendly community um, to encourage business growth, to encourage uh, other things on farming, things like vineyards, things like equestrian centers to help bring agritourism to this county so that we can help build a tax base, get people coming here to this beautiful county so that we can help be able to provide the services that we need to the people that live in this county. Again, my name is Michael Mood. Please vote for me on May the 14th, and I thank everybody for your time. I'd like to thank you both for being with us today, and best of luck to you both in the upcoming election. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, with that, we'll be uh, soon drawing to a conclusion here for our first day of this forum. Uh, our second day of uh, the forum will begin on uh, Wednesday, the April t 17th, if you're listening and watching this live right now, at 8 o'clock in the morning with the West Virginia Senate 15th candidates, Craig Blair, the incumbent, Mike Folk, and Tom Willis, the challengers. At 9 o'clock from the Jefferson County Board of Education, Donna Joy and James Southern. At 9.30 with the House of Delegates 99th, Wayne Clark and Mike Allers, Jr., along with Daphne Andrews. At 10 a.m. with the House of Delegates 97th, that's Chris Anders and Pam Brush. At 10.30 with the House of Delegates 98th, Barbara Fuller and Joe Funkhauser. And at 11 o'clock with the House of Delegates 91st, the incumbent Don Forst, along with Joe DeSoto, and uh, Tammy Hess as well. Now, if uh, you only caught partial interviews here today or tomorrow you can't join us for any of those, remember we'll be cutting up all these individually and posting them live uh, to our WRNR TV 10 YouTube uh, page where you can watch individual segments. This entire uh, day and uh, the Wednesday forum as well will be posted uh, on Facebook at the exact moment this concludes. It will be archived there along with the individual cuts on, in perpetuity uh, on our uh, Facebook page and YouTube uh, as well. I want to thank all the folks involved in setting all this equipment up today, which includes Colin McLaughlin, uh, Nick Berzellini, Dylan Bishop, our on-site producer, uh, along with uh, the uh, mogul, Michael Hornby, who uh, is also here for most of the well, day. He's a mogul he's now, here. Right? Oh, yeah. He's, he's various uh, media entities, uh, Delegate Michael Hornby. Um, and my panelists here today, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield, who's still in attendance here as well, uh, New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap, Mr. Gilstrap. Been a pleasure. And the uh, editor of the Independent Observer, Steve Pearson, who pinch hits on Jefferson County expertise when we need him. Steve, we always appreciate your involvement. Thank you for having me. And when will the next edition of the Independent Observer? We'll be out in May, just before the uh, election. We'll have some uh, candidate interviews and questionnaires and lots of good election coverage. Good timing, sir. Yes. And now for uh, Colin McLaughlin, who's back at the studio, we will conclude our coverage from day one from the Berkeley County Commission Chambers on behalf of all the folks who helped make this possible. Thank you very much. We appreciate you joining us on Talk Radio, WRNR, AM and FM, on TV10, the Comcast uh, subscribers in Jefferson and in Berkeley County, and to all of you who follow along on our Facebook live stream as well. Thank you so much for being with us, and we hope you join us again tomorrow. This is Talk Radio, WRNR Martinsburg, and TV10.